I am praying, pondering, and I am searching, wondering. Are my words so caught on the roof of my heavens that they will not transcend and tell of my joy and echo exaltations? My mind, my tongue, my pen, they are all stricken, it seems, as if I were a crippled image, a broken mirage. My members are so full of the love. My ribs are a basket for a heart that is a collection of fragrant flowers. My breath is celebration, and yet my hand seems crippled. How do I collect the unfathomable in words? How do I speak the unspeakable language of joy that comes when the ghost is known by the greatness of God and the meager is loved by the magnificent? Oh, how grand the God who loves his ideas! This book is for exaltations. How embarrassed I would be to deliver it by hand to heaven's door to say that this represents my feelings for God my adoration of the one love, my interblending with the Father. What should I say when the scribblings are searched by wisdom seeking some depth, some heartfelt and profound conviction? What shall I say when it is read and I am asked, Is this all you know of our love? Should I scandalize my pitiful vocabulary? Should I declare the language of my birth inadequate? Do I say that my heart did not yearn enough, that it did not seek enough, did not open enough, that my heart was unfit for the task? The very heart God made. Oh, miserable words. Such paupers sent before a king. I love you, God. What more can be said? I love, I long, I adore, I relish, I cry out for communion, I covet expression, I know joy, profound joy because of thy presence. If all my days I could but dwell on thee, all my hours, my minutes, my seconds, but then, what of life, the living, the celebration of being, the proud, voracious gratitude for being given this separation in order to live independently and to look back to know the hidden treasure and to long and to love and to adore? It is this separation itself which formulates and fosters this profound love this ravishing desire to know and to love and to eradicate the difference, the line of flesh, this bodily barrier. It is in this body that I exalt, that I sing and laugh and dance and know the joy of the Father, the grandness of the one love. It is this insufferable inadequacy that is the greatest praise to the creator of creation. It is the meager, inadequate, unworthy words I scribble that are the quintessential acknowledgement, born in frustration, seeking, struggling to capture and to perpetuate the joy in words, on paper, to be shared, to be communicated, to be evoked, and to be understood. Oh, Father, I am a dolt with broken hands that make sounds to the heavens like the braying of an ass. This is my song of exultation, my ode to true joy that is only experienced when the ghost is known and the ego is surrendered, sung through the deepest desire to be faded, to be flawed, to be erased, to be made unknown to kin and to lovers, to be lost in the great ocean, drowned in the blue wine, lost as a tear, as a raindrop, in the great sea, no longer defined but interblended with God, 
not to be satisfied, to be loved, but to be love itself. This is the sweet agony, the torturous ecstasy of being made flesh, to pay tribute, to love, to long for, and to adore the hidden treasure known. I do love thee. How I do love thee, Lord. I feel your embrace. I am truly humbled. I do know that my crumbs are your banquet. I pray thee will lift me nearer to your table's edge. I am praying, smiling, and I am wanting, praising. The fragile flowers that are my heart are yours. <laughs>